Micah Hanks here, and I'm excited right now to be joined by my good friend Rich Hoffman of the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies, and I'm going to be seeing Rich in the days ahead down in Huntsville, Alabama at an SCU event. Rich, how are you? I'm doing well, Micah. It's good to be with you. Rich, I think it goes without saying, UAP is really quite the hot topic right now, isn't it? Uh, well, definitely. I, you know, I mean, it, to me, it's, it, it's incredible. You know, you have to realize I've been at this for 58 years, and so in the 58 years that I've been doing it, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of changes. I come back from the Blue Book days, you know, and then then it was like the dark ages when Blue Book went out of existence. And now it's popping up again. And I'm like so excited. And especially like now that we have scientists that are actually coming out again and wanting to be a part of it. Uh, and so I'm thrilled. I am just this is my life dream. <laughs> Rich, can you tell me a bit about some of SCU's current efforts towards studying UAP and applying science toward it? A lot of exciting things, actually, to be quite honest. We have like, a, a, I think as many as maybe like five to seven maybe projects that we're working on. Uh, everything from a study on USOs, where they are and, and, and where we get reports uh, to the point where we have nuclear intentions. We're trying to figure out what the intentions are behind the objects when they uh, go to these nuclear sites that have been recorded throughout like history. Uh, and we're documenting that, and that's going to be talked about at the conference. Uh, we also analyzed the rubber duck video, uh, which you know, I think a lot of people are aware of. It was a sighting in, in Arizona with the Customs and Border Protection. Uh, we're also doing an atmospheric, kind of like the, uh, the effects, the EM effects that are associated with, uh, with objects. Uh, we're looking, we have a team that's looking into that. Um, we're also uh, taking reports. Uh, we're trying to go after... Uh, credible data that we can look at uh, via those reports. Uh, that's something relatively new. We have a team that's helping out with that. And then uh, the other thing that I would like to, to tell you is that, you know, we've been heavily you know, sending press releases and trying to get connected up on the Hill. Uh, you know, I don't know if you know it or not, but our uh, Nimitz report actually did go up onto the Hill and we're thrilled about that. And we have people like Chris Mellon and Hal Putoff and all these other people that are helping us to get there. Uh, the, uh, another thing that we're doing is we're partnering with organizations that are helping, uh, create, uh, uh, basically cameras, well-equipped cam cameras we can put out and deploy to be able to now take and collect data. And then the other thing is that we've partnered, well, we're partnered with UAPX. And if you saw the, the show that was called a tear in the sky, uh, you'll realize that they, they had an instrumented study off the uh, West coast. And we're going to be helping as an organization to be able to go and analyze some of that data for them. So, I mean, what's not to be thrilled about, but it's, it's an exciting time for SCU right now. Rich, you know, with your many decades of research and personal involvement with this topic, what to you is most important about UAP research going forward? I think that, you know, to me, it, you know, when you go back to when I was doing the investigations back in those days, and I actually got the bump in and to uh, a lot of the uh, Air Force officers that were actually doing the same maybe case that I was doing in Dayton, Ohio. Um, I mean, I was just down the road from Project Blue Book, so I got to connected with them. But, uh, you know, the, the thing for me is that when I was doing investigations at that time, we didn't have the technology to be able to do much. I mean, I'd go out on a case investigation with, you know, pieces of blank pieces of paper and maybe some colored pencils or something of that nature and have somebody try to sketch what they could re re recollect of what they'd seen. Uh, you know, you, you might've had a, like a, an old, you know, civil defense type aged uh, Geiger counter that you could walk around with. Uh, you'd have a pretty pathetic uh, camera maybe to try to document some of that stuff. And, and that's about what you really could do. Today's technology for me is the most uh, incredible aspect of my lifetime in, in doing this. Uh, in, that, in the sense that you now have a smartphone with tremendous numbers of capabilities built into that, that I can completely do an investigation face to face with you, if you would, as if you're a witness, uh, I can actually see what you're seeing at the time using my, my smartphone. I can look at the aircraft that are flying overhead. I can see the satellites directly above you. I can see star patterns uh, directly above you. I know what the weather is. All this is being uh, capable of me doing basically by my cell phone. I can look at uh, if there's, you know, I mean, there's type, and, and this, regardless of where you're located uh, on the globe, I can pretty much do that. 
I can use Google Earth to actually see your backyard. <laughs> you know? So I mean, what it might look like. And, and so I guess what I'm trying to say is the technologies have become affordable. And at the same time, they're, they're easily within the hands of a lot of people that now you can start to get a little bit better data passed to you than what we had back at the, in those days when I got started. Yeah. Again, to have experienced from then to now in itself must be exciting for you, Rich. I've got to tell you, I'm really excited to be headed down to Huntsville to see you and the rest of the SCU team. And of course, tickets are sold out for in-person attendance, but there's hope because folks who'd still like to watch the conference online can do so. Can you talk a little about how they can actually get an online ticket? Yeah, the, the, the product that we've got is uh, Whova. Uh, and Whova is probably one of the top rated conference apps that you can, uh, you can get. Uh, we did a lot of research to be able to get one that was going to be something other than you, you sitting on just a Zoom uh, and looking at people. This is what very interactive. It's, it's completely networked uh, in the context that you can have it on your cell phone. You can look at it that way. Uh, there's an app for that. Uh, or you can look at it on your website and be able to go into it. And the neat thing about it is it's got tools like being able to network. Uh, it, you can actually go in and I've got two networking sessions for the people who come on virtually to ba basically go into it like you're at a table and you have three other people at, at, the, at your table. You can have a conversation and get to meet them. And then 15 minutes later, you're going to be rotated randomly to another table. And we'll do this for an hour uh, each day. And, uh, and that people uh, last year absolutely loved that. Plus, there's many, many discussion forums going on and a, and a way for you to actually converse directly with people. You can even go and have a phone conversation if you want with our, or basically a video conversation with them. Uh, at the same time, you can ask questions online. And it's all captured. Uh, and, you know, people are sharing right now, uh, you know, and I've been doing it quite frankly. A lot of the, the virtual attendees for months now have been up there just interacting, dialoguing. Uh, asking questions, creating new topics to discuss. Uh, and so I, I just encourage people to be able to think of this app uh, as being one of the top notch uh, apps out there. And people last year at the virtual only conference absolutely loved it. So uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. And where can people go if they want to find out how they can purchase an online ticket to watch the streaming event online? Uh, just simply by going to our uh, SCU website, uh, if you go to www.explorescu.org, you'll find that we have a link up there that basically will take you over to a registration page. Uh, and on the registration page, then there are you know information about the conference, where it's going to be held. There's also uh, the agenda. There's the speakers' bios and abstracts that are up there available to them, uh, and they can basically go in and pay for their registration to be able to go to the conference virtually. Uh, and then uh, after that, you know, they want to look for an email that will come to them with a confirmation about their registration. But anyway, in general, it's just, you know, information, uh, more information for the virtual attendees. Uh, at the same time, uh, it also has a link then over to the actual conference app where people can go and download that app or go online on their desktop and see it. But anyway, that's pretty much how it goes. Well, again, Rich, I just want to thank you and the entire SCU team for all the hard work you guys are putting into applying science toward this mystery. And I look forward to seeing you in the days ahead down there in Huntsville at the Anomalous Aerospace Phenomena Conference. Well, I'm looking forward to it, Mike. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. I mean, we've talked for a long time and I, I'm just thrilled about it. And, and it's really exciting to be able to bump into, you know, bump up next to elbows, you know, maybe like with COVID and everything else, but just to be able to get together and see each other, it's going to be remarkable. I missed it uh, for the last two years, to be honest with you. And, um, and I'm thrilled. Indeed. We're long overdue, my friends. So just a few days away again, to find out how to get your streaming ticket so you can watch the entire conference from the